one thing that the home team will have tonight that the visitors absolutely, unequivocally will not. Good morning to you. Good Thursday morning. I'm Dan Kovacevic of DK Pittsburgh Sports, and this is Daily Shot of Penguins. It comes your way bright and early every weekday if you're into football and or baseball. Those are guaranteed to be a lot less stressful on this particular day. And you can check out my daily shots of Steelers and Pirates in the same place that you found this. Penguins versus Red Wings tonight, 7.08 p.m. face-off at PPG Paints Arena. I, I can't sufficiently describe the magnitude of this game. You don't often see such a scenario in the regular season. It's tantamount to a one-and-done for either side. That's That's really as clear-cut as it gets. And that even extends into overtime points or shootout points and not giving the other team a point in the process. What you have to do, basically, if you're the Penguins or the Red Wings, is take two points on the table, execute the full four-point swing. And I've got to tell you, the matchup is such that it favors the Penguins. There's no way it wouldn't favor the Penguins, but maybe not in the way a casual fan would think. I don't see the Penguins as being particularly deep. I don't see the Red Wings as being particularly deep up front. They do have some guys who can score. So do these guys. Defensively, the Red Wings don't have, you know, an Eric Carlson or a Chris Letang, they've got Moritz Sider. Sider can really, really play too, that kid. But after that, when you get into the Olimata, Jeff Petrie territory, it, it's it's an ordinary defense core. In goal, I would say that the Penguins would have the edge, except that Alex Nedeljkovic has kind of taken a little bit of a step back in his past couple of games. Still got to go with him, but it hasn't been great. It hasn't been where... It was, let's say, a week ago when it looked like he could take the ice and steal outcomes. But you know what? I, I can do that forever. I can get into special teams breakdowns and everything else here. And what it comes down to is that the Penguins have a Sid, and nobody else does. Sid is made for these types of events. He lives for the Game 7, for the one-and-done, for the big, dramatic scenario. doesn't mean he wins them all. Obviously, he's lost Game 7s. Heck, he once lost a Game 7 to the Red Wings, although that was a long, long time ago. He lost a game this very week in Toronto. Strange circumstance, but still a loss. That said, he's the guy that you want. He's the guy that you would pick first in a draft of building the team that you want to win a single game. Yes, arguably even now in 2024, as evidenced by the collective membership of the National Hockey League Players Association for a fifth consecutive year yesterday, voting Sid as the most complete player in their league. Not writers. Not broadcasters, not GMs, the players, the people right at ice level. And it wasn't close. Sid was at 38%. And the next highest guy was Sasha Barkov at 14. And behind him were Connor McDavid and Nathan McKinnon and Andre Kopitar. Sid is that guy. Sid is the one who's going to take to the rink, enjoying that environment more than anybody else. When we saw Sid fall off three weeks ago, yeah, of course, the Jake Gensel trade was the primary factor in that. He's not even running away from that discussion anymore. He's acknowledged it. But then after that, when you saw those blah games and those losses, especially the, the three on the road in Newark, Dallas, and then blowing the four-goal lead in Denver, you saw 
basically a, a captain without a ship. You saw a guy who was once magnificently called a serial winner by Mike Babcock. This was in the Sochi Olympics that I was covering over in Russia in 2014. Never, you'll never, ever, ever hear a better description of who and what Sid is. And he's out there with nothing to play for. This isn't like last year. They were in it until right to the end, and the Rockford Ice Hogs put them down. He's been at this for almost 20 years. Do you know how many meaningless games he's played in that time? You can't even put it on two hands. So all of this happens, and it happens, of course, in large part because of him. He's been the NHL's second leading scorer behind McKinnon over the past month. But it gives him his mojo back. It gives him his raison d'etre. He's, he's sit again. He gets to do what he does best and what he's done among the best of all time in the history of organized sport, not just ice hockey. This was Sid on this subject after practice yesterday at PPG Paints Arena. They've all felt pretty big for, for a while now, so um, yeah, this one obviously, uh, I guess, even bigger given the circumstances, but I uh, feel like we've been playing uh, in games like this for a bit. See that right there? That. The Red Wings don't have one of those. When we come back, J1Q... J1Q comes from John, who says, DK is crazy, isn't it, that the Capitals have a minus 41 goal differential, and they're ahead of us. The Islanders have a minus 20 goal differential, and they're ahead of us. The Penguins are at plus four. Uh, it, it is, and it isn't, John. And the reason that I say that is there actually is a crazy statistic that's beneath that. But it really doesn't have much to do, actually doesn't have anything to do with the Capitals or the Islanders or any other team or even comparative goal differentials. The crazy statistic, the defining statistic of this season, regardless of how these final few days play out, will be the power play percentage. Because even within the power play percentage, you can find the Penguins' shooting percentage, their general shooting percentage, which is really low. I've brought this up many times over the past few months, but the Penguins are a top five team in generating shots and a bottom five team generating goals. That's nuts. Now, some of that water has begun to find its level over the past month. The Penguins, in that time, in that month, have 57 goals, which is the third most in the league. So there's been some bounce back to that. And they've also performed better on the power play than I think people are giving them credit for, uh, including in these past handful of games in which they haven't scored. It's been a really dynamic, aggressive power play. They're doing the things that you want them to do, which they weren't doing earlier this season. They're getting the puck to the net. They're getting bodies to the net. Just not finishing. That's the outlier here, John. That's It's goal differential can mean a lot of different things. You can be a defensively suspect team, and of course the Penguins have been that at times. You can blow leads. Penguins have done a bunch of that. But the predominant issue related to this season is that they haven't scored enough goals relative to their shots. And the predominant reason for that is that they haven't produced on the power play. The one thing that I feel certain that they're going to have to do this off season is find some significant way, not we're going to talk about it. We're going to meet over it. Find some significant way to address everything that after the fact, went wrong with the power play, but also what's needed moving forward. 
example I can give of that that really should jump out at everybody at this point is not Michael Bunting's addition, but Michael Bunting's addition as a bumper. When you see him going to the front of the net, what he'll do is he'll bump out. He'll move back between the hash marks into the high slot, even as high as the upper part of the circles. And he'll do that to give the point man and to give the lower uh, forward another target so that the Penguins don't just go perimeter, 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 and basically end up painting an octagon around the zone seven times, and then the two minutes are up. What you're able to do with the bumper guy is go to the inside, force the penalty killers to turn their backs on you, force them to pay attention to that guy in the middle. That'll open up more space around you. And then what ends up happening? Everybody can move in a little bit closer. It's the Edmonton effect that I was describing for you a few months ago. The Oilers are unbelievable at it. But then again, look at who they have participating on their top unit. They will just close in on you. Penguins are doing that too. Again, just need to finish. I appreciate the question. I appreciate everybody listening to Daily Shot of Penguins. And we're going to do another one of these tomorrow, provided the sun still comes up, right? 